Good morning. Uh, welcome everyone to Descamp. Welcome to Romania for, for the ones that are coming from abroad. Um, we will show you today uh, something uh, about our work this year, like a retrospective. We want to be a funny retrospective um, to show you some things behind the scenes, how we, we deal with, let's say, big cybersecurity incidents. We will see how big they, they were, actually, and so on. Uh, we encourage you to ask questions uh, for me or for my colleague Alex. Uh, I do hope that I can change slides also. Yeah. It should be on to work, actually. So, <coughs> you already know us, Kathleen and Alex. Uh, I will uh, pass the floor to my colleague to make an introduction about uh, what we are going to talk today. So basically, I'm quite old that I caught the internet in its infancy. First time I got online was 1995, I think, and the internet was a much calmer and mellow place. Uh, basically, there were no big companies, no money involved. Everything was just a playful, a playground, basically. Um, so you're going to start complaining now? I'm sort of, yeah. Okay. Things kind of got out of hand pretty soon. Um, I think in 2001, uh, big companies like PayPal, eBay, and so on and so forth brought a lot of money onto the web. Uh, and then trouble started arising because when there is money, there are also bad guys that want to grab them. And everything was sort of okay-ish till, I don't know, uh, Probably 2007, 2008, when social media started arriving with Facebook and everything else, and a lot more people got together on the internet. Uh, later on, in 2010, I think it was the first major incident with Stuxnet that kind of put everybody on pause because that was a lot bigger than whatever everybody else had seen before. Uh, Later on, in 2013, uh, late 2013, ransomware began to arrive again in force, and due to the facility of paying with uh, electronic currencies, the phenomenon got bigger and bigger and bigger, till 2017 when ransomware is already a dictionary term, so it's that powerful. I saw the internet when I was a child, and it was like a child, the internet itself. Now, it's a little bit different. I mean, big companies are throwing a lot of money at security. Uh, governments are throwing a lot of money at offensive and defensive technologies. Uh, now it's like a grown-up, and he has some sort of a fit of anger nowadays. So, yeah, so. We will talk about today uh, about biggest incidents this year that we deal in Cetro, but uh, actually it's about Wanakai that you already heard, about Notpetia, Petrebit and so on, uh, Cleaner and uh, Shadow Brokers and so on, and of course about free vouchers because we already, uh, we all like free word in front of anything. So, <laughs> free vouchers will work. Um, okay, so we will show you how we felt in, in the time of these, let's say, uh, incidents and how we, we dealt with them because we think that it was also very, very funny and we'll show you why. But it will be the last part also from my colleague uh, Alex. Uh, I start with this slide, I changed it uh, yesterday because yesterday uh, another big thing came to us and it was uh, about the free vouchers with Weezer this time, but the slide uh, it's, it's older. Uh, it was with these uh, big companies uh, giving something for free. Um, actually, it, these kind of things helped us to 
uh, gather a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, Facebook likes and so on on our web page. When we try to publish something about a serious incident or describe a vulnerability or something, nobody cares a lot. So we have like no reach, no nothing. When you talk about Facebook or about uh, Yahoo uh, or uh, Messenger or WhatsApp, everybody gets interested, everybody talks, everybody and so on. So yeah, we also want to make us heard, known. We want to gather a lot of people in our communication channels because when we have something to say, more important, we hope that everybody can, uh, can hear us. And yeah, the free vouchers uh, thing is very effective. Happened also yesterday. Everybody got crazy, but the banks had a real uh, impact because they started to see that their clients, um, let's say credit cards, are charged. And uh, when it comes to money, yeah, it's bad. Bad rabbit is something that happened recently, and uh, at the beginning, we were kind of relaxed because we believe that yeah, this is this will will not touch Romania. It's not about Romania. We wrote it. We wrote about news about affecting some other infrastructures abroad and so on. But in the end, we found out that we do have almost 50 web domains in Romania that are used as what they call for bad rabbit. Uh, first, we, we knew only about one website, and we had to scan the whole .ro, let's say, web domains to find out that there are another 48, and all are on the same IP. Maybe we should be, uh, let's say, uh, um, we can have uh, this done in another way. We, done, we didn't check when we found first domain in Romania, we didn't check the others because we only knew that there are another 180, let's say, web domains of the same IP. But we, don't, we didn't have a clue that maybe the others are affected also. And after that, we tried to talk with the ISP, with the hoster, and so on. He said, yeah, it, it should be a bad password or it's something, a vulnerability on, on every each of these websites. Uh, it's just like that. We we don't have a problem on that. We cannot have a problem because we do a we do have a very good security on our infrastructure and so on. So it's still under investigation, and we hope we will have more to say and we we'll publish. Uh, what we are interested in is to find out how they were compromised and how all these uh, 50 websites were injected with that malicious JavaScript. But uh, you know, that's why we are coming here to talk with you. We hope that also uh, ISPs, hosters are in this room, and we hope to make a reach to to them to build trust, let's say, to help us investigate this kind of thing. Okay. Um, another big thing was the C cleaner, uh, let's say, uh, incident. We all know what all about. Um, the funny thing is that the, the news media came to Third Row to ask specific questions how many victims we have in Romania. You don't know how many victims we have in Romania, but what did you do at Third Row? I mean, you should know how many downloaded this compromised version. We don't know that. I'm, and I'm sure that we shouldn't know this kind of information. Okay, but it's very hard to, let's say, to explain this kind of things to to the people that don't know the business. Um, shadow brokers changed the landscape, uh, let's say, uh, starting from the last years, but uh, more from May this year, uh, because they basically showed us that if, if, we don't, uh, if we don't update our systems, it's bad. We already knew that, but now we know it again. Um, we had WannaCry, WannaCry, of course, a uh, very big incident. Uh, the news media uh, talked about it, search talked about it, everybody talked about uh, WannaCry. Um, we want to show you how WannaCry was 
actually uh, dealt in, uh, in Romania and there were mistakes there. Uh, also, uh, I would say that cybersecurity experts made mistakes in the, in the few hours of WannaCry. Uh, we were also in a hurry to publish something because we heard about it on, on Friday and see how we reacted. We learned a lot from, from this uh, WannaCry thing. And uh, I would like my uh, colleague Alex to, to, to speak about that. Uh, NotPetya, it's something that didn't hit Romania too much. We know about some victims from Facebook, of course, because nobody uh, reported to Sertro. But uh, again, Alex, please show to everybody uh, how we deal with one Friday. So, okay, basically it was a quite peaceful Friday afternoon. <coughs> evening and um, I think I was playing something and I, I got frustrated with the game and I, I turned to the phone and checked Twitter and there it was, some guy was complaining about a new strain of malware that was particularly bad. Uh, there were some mentions about SMB attacks related to that. I did quite remember about uh, the Shadow Broker leak there were a couple of things in there that were quite bad if they would get out on an enterprise network. I hope it wasn't that. I notified my colleague that handles a uh, Facebook page and uh, all our social media accounts and I told him, get ready, something bad is going to happen. I knew it was Friday. So, so yeah, I was the one that I said, you know, it's Friday, it will not come to Romania. So. Let's, yeah. <laughs> let's keep it low. <laughs> okay. So, actually, due to the SMB vector, I was thinking that uh, they won't start their computers in enterprises being weekend, and they probably will remain unscattered mostly. Uh, what I didn't account for were VPNs, and for some certain computers that were open all day long, so there were not proper workstations. Uh, of course, in that moment when I saw it's a, another malware, I said, okay, it, it's probably definitely spam. And after that, I had no idea as of yet how it would uh, spread further on within the network. Yeah, but uh, uh, because it was already on the news, uh, my boss called me, uh, you know, we should publish something about this. And I said, but we don't know nothing. We don't have a payload yet. We don't know how many victims we have in Romania. We don't know a single victim. Nobody tell us anything. So why to scare people? Why should we publish something just right now, knowing nothing? But the answer was, everybody writes about it. So the Romanian self should know already all about it. So let's write something. Okay. Uh, we wrote a lot of stuff about it. I think it was Friday in the evening and the next morning more reports uh, came up. Uh, I think we, we, we went to, to work that weekend, right? Yeah. yeah, some of us from home, some of us from the office, some uh, of us from home. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, and basically we, we managed to establish a certain, uh, not exactly IOC, but a behavior for that spam and we managed to get out an article almost accurate. Uh, in, the, in the morning there were already news about the kill switch, we'll get to that a little bit later for those that had no idea what it was. So you try to avoid that we failed with the detection vector? Because yeah. we did in the first hours. Yeah, in the first <laughs> hours, yeah, we, 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 we believed it was spam because, well, let's face it, every every malware infection in an enterprise starts with spam, with somebody clicking on a card and link or opening we, a patch one. It was weird that some of the big reports didn't say nothing about the infection vector in the, in the first hours, but that didn't tell us anything. Uh, uh, we read other reports that say we should we should take care of. Uh, not opening spam attachments, URLs, etc. 
say, let's we we'll, uh, had like a guideline and say you should try to avoid this. Take care to your uh, spam inbox, not open uh, malicious or suspicious surveillance and so on. So kind of like the infection vector for us in the, in the first hours was uh, some sort of spam email, something like that. Because of the pressure, of course. <laughs> Yeah, still no malware sample. I, I think the first malware sample that I saw was somewhere in the afternoon of the next day. And there were a couple of reports on the net of guys that already, already analyzed it. Uh, they weren't quite sure about uh, the exploits used, but, well, Microsoft patched a month earlier due to NSA notification. They had a full month patch. Well, they, after that, another month, uh, WannaCry hits, so I don't know. I, I understand yeah. that there are certain constraints in enterprise environments that require you to actually check if the update will not mess up with the whole software that you've got installed within the enterprise, but I don't know, two months, I think. I feel it's enough time. But so, never mind. Yeah, so I spent uh, some hours asking my colleagues, my contacts from other CSERTs to please give me a sample of an email with that one cry thing because I want to publish it and was quiet, nobody <laughs> had it and um, in the end, yeah, we uh, there were also the, the managed to know that it's spreading the ISMB and it's like a world but it was just a thing that didn't happen recently until that time. Uh, all the ransomware came via, via spam or via malicious ads or something like that, so yeah. Basically, there was also the, the, the issue that a couple of guys uh, were reporting that they tried to pay the ransom and uh, the encryption key was not working. And more than that, even the site was not working. So, um, Recent statistics show that 60% of uh, those affected by ransomware actually paid the ransomware. So that was quite troublesome for everybody involved. Um, also, uh, forensic protocols mandate that you unplug the computer from the network. And that didn't quite work out as expected due to a recent finding in the next morning. Uh, yeah. Like that. Yeah, the kill switch, the famous kill switch. Uh, you know, there are two uh, irregular aspects about this ransomware. First, there was the kill switch. Uh, I'm not aware of too many uh, malicious uh, software that would have a, an actual kill switch till wanna cry. After that, there were other campaigns that already also had yeah. kill switch. The funny thing was that uh, a lot of public institutions. Um, choose to, to cut off internet right away after they saw the yeah. first infection. And wasn't uh, right a good choice. <laughs> not, a, not a good idea because, yeah, it had a good switch and it needs internet connection to actually work. But let's face it, in the real world, when you uh, happens to find that your machines in the network is infected with ransomware, you cut the the network because it's a it's a natural thing to do, but didn't work here. That was like yeah. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we still uh, had to respond to a lot of questions, also for one guy. How many victims? <coughs> Do we have in Romania? Okay. How many public institutions are affected? You know, the media is very interested in how many and specifically which institution is affected to finger them in the, in the press. Uh, you don't know why you, you don't know. You are the national self, so we suppose that you have sensors in all the network and so on because we live in the post Snowden revelation era. You must have something like that. 
what is back from there. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, we heard about the car manufacturer that was hit because they had a VPN in the, with their headquarters in another country. They got infected via this VPN, not uh, via internet. And uh, a lot of journalists called to, uh, let's say, make us, make us recognize and say that it's probably North Korea or it's Russia. Uh, this was uh, the final objective of their conversation with us. Uh, yeah. yeah, there is a whole range of issues with the media. Uh, they are supposed to somehow translate from the technical language to the layman language and they kind of fail to do that. Uh, I have no idea why is that. Probably our short attention span regarding news articles. If it takes longer than a minute to read it, it's not to be read. Uh, but this somehow needs to change because, you know, we are all in this together. Uh, if we don't uh, educate ourselves regarding the internet and how it works, and that should start with the media and with the political establishment, we are, we will be forced to repeat this kind of mistakes over and over again. So yeah, so we want basically to transmit the, the right message and we want to do like uh, public awareness about that and we say, you know, if you want to make an article, please tell to the people to make updates and take care uh, of their behavior on the internet and, and that's basically all that we need to say about it. But I can also understand their business because this is like, like a very, uh, let's say, maybe it's not so interesting for the, for the, for the people to say this. Like, like, so they need like a intrigue, like a real story there. It must be something like national attacks, something like that. So, yeah, but whatever. Uh, but we deal with that. We say, you know, we have something. We are monitoring everything on one account. We have a life map. It wasn't our slide map. Our, it was, uh, <laughs> of course, of, of the guy that actually activated the kill switch, but they were very happy with that. So. And, of course, we tried to do a lot of lesson learns after that, to have a public message on TV, on websites, on Twitter. We had some, let's say, courses with also with journalists and some users in the public administration, they were very interested about it. And I think we should remember that <laughs> yeah, no good deal. nothing will remain punished. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Uh, we wanted to somehow showcase that uh, if your first aim is to spread uh, a message, you may fail. Your, your first task should be to actually analyze the matter, analyze the incident, extract what's important, see what is true, what's not true, and after that, make a public statement.